All right, welcome back everybody to another episode here at Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking it out. Um, for anyone listening to the podcast version of this, some of this is going to be a little bit visual. Uh, we're going to do what we can to make sure we describe it appropriately, but if you want to see it, we do link the video uh, in the podcast description. So today we're going to be talking about a topic a little different. We haven't done one of these, but we think we're going to start uh, doing a little bit more kind of AI in medicine and medical education topics. So let us know what you think. Let us know if it's helpful, if you enjoy it. We're going to be talking about using ChatGPT. If I could just take a quick 60 seconds of your time, I wanted to introduce our newest whiteboard medicine emergency and critical care community, and that is our Patreon community. Here we post emergency and critical care medicine medical education topics every other day. We focus on landmark trials, new trials, clinical pearls, bedside tips and tricks, and much more. Everything emergency and critical care. We also upload study guides for each video. We have practice tests. And our newest addition is going to be mini courses that kind of lay out video study guides, practice questions um, into an easily digestible form that we hope is very applicable and helpful to the bedside. Our goal is to try to get even 1% of our YouTube community to join our Patreon community. It would be incredibly helpful in allowing us to spend more time creating content and elevating our current content. We appreciate you all and we hope to see many of you there to write great practice questions. All right, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. In this episode, we're going to be talking about why this matters, what ChatGPT can do, a step-by-step -step a list on how exactly to use ChatGPT to write questions. Uh, we'll then talk about a sample prompt that you could directly copy and place, workflow tips, a little pitfalls, warnings, uh, and then just kind of some evidence on that. And this study guide will be on our Patreon page, including all the prompts. So if you have an interest in accessing this, definitely check out our Patreon page. We're doing uh, stuff to really buff up that community, so we'd love to see you there. All right, no further ado, using ChatGPT to write great practice questions, why it matters. Well, high quality practice questions in general are really essential for kind of active learning exam prep, clinical reasoning training. And the reality here is it's really expensive to buy a lot of question banks. Okay, I think everyone knows that. And literally hundreds of dollars, at least back in our day. Uh, ChatGPT can actually rapidly generate questions that mimic the USMLE, mimic board styles, mimic NCLEX, all that good stuff. You can have it provide thorough explanations. And this saves a lot of time, educators. It saves a lot of money for students. And there's no end, right? It's not a limited question bank. This is kind of an endless question bank. But remember, AI is only as good as the prompts you give it, right? You need a really structured, verified prompt. And that's what we hope to share with you all today, how to make those prompts that really make good practice questions um, that are accurate and helpful and informative and in the style that is most useful to you. So overview and what ChatGPT can do. So ChatGPT can do a lot in this realm, okay? It can generate single best answer multiple choice questions. It could do USMLE style, board style, again, NCLEC, did we spell it wrong, NCLEC style. Um, it can do like long clinical vignettes. You can vary the complexity uh, based on your level of training. It can provide thorough answer options and rationale for both right and wrong questions. You can even tailor questions specific learners. Is it med students? Is it residents? Is it fellows? Is it nurses? Is it respiratory therapists? Is it PAs or NPs? Right? All of this can be done quite easily on ChatGPT. It can adapt to specific topics. You want to talk about critical care or cardiology or infectious disease or any of that, right? You can give it a prompt that has it create questions just for a specific topic. And you can do batch generated question sense, right? You can ask for five or 10 or 50, you know, questions if you want a whole kind of batch question set. So how do you do this? And um, we have done this and it is really useful. It's impressive what it can do. So step by step, how do you use ChatGPT to write these questions? Well, we're going to go through the structure for what you should include in the prompt, and then we'll actually give an example prompt. So number one, in your prompt, you want to define your goal. You want to say, who is the target that ChatGPT is making questions for? Are you a medical or nursing student? Are you a nurse? Are you a resident? Are you a fellow? Are you a physician, an MP, a PA, an RT, EMS, what have you? Name what you want ChatGPT to make questions for, the target audience. And then list what type of knowledge, what type of question you want, right? Is it board style? Is it on the guidelines? Is it on new trials? Um, is it on clinical reasoning? You can really specify all those things. And then what difficulty within, you know, your target? So you could say, I'm a med student and I want, you know, 
easier beginner questions or I'm a med student, I want advanced questions. Put all that in the prompt. And when writing that strong prompt, be very specific about the format. For instance, if you want a multiple choice test, write, write a clinical vignette with four answer options, only one correct. Include an explanation for each answer. Target USMLE step two style. That's how specific you can get. And at the end of the prompt, always put, do you have any questions or clarifications? Because that's where it will ask you anything it's confused about. And you can clarify those things rather it kicking it, rather than it kicking out some product that is confusing because it wasn't sure what exactly you wanted it to do. I kind of wish that was built in that it would automatically ask questions, but as far as I'm aware, it doesn't. So at, for every prompt, write in there any questions or clarifications at the end. And then once you get it back, check for accuracy, clarity, length. You can revise it. It's really easy. It sends something back you don't like. Say, make it harder. Add lab values. Focus on ventilator management. You know, maybe you want to change it to make it easier. Maybe you want to say make it a mix of shock and, you know, DKA or something, right? You can have it refine based on your review of the questions it kicks out. You could say make the explanations more thorough, make them less thorough, make the questions longer, all that good stuff. And then obviously always validate it. And this here is really important. And in our anecdotal experience, ChatGPT seems pretty good with questions. The times we've seen it mess up is actually when math is involved. Um, it seems to sometimes get the math wrong, but just for general content questions, it actually seems to do pretty good. But there is that concept of AI hallucinations where ChatGPT just makes stuff up. So you gotta be alert and you gotta be aware of that. And that's why, um, you know, we actually use ChatGPT to help us generate a lot of the uh, question banks we put on our Patreon page where we review all those questions. And in general, anecdotally, gosh, we'd say it's over 90% accurate and good with its answers. But every once in a while, you read one and you read the answers and you're like, oh, that's actually not right. It just completely made that up. Um, and it seems to be mostly related to math when it has to kind of do equation stuff, which is interesting. You'd think it'd be okay at that. And then um, you can use it if you're a student to generate kind of uh, self-generated questions for active recall as if you're a faculty you can build question banks edit for accuracy and distribute it to trainees or what have you um, it's very versatile in this sense so let's get into a sample prompt here's a ready to use prompt for a high quality ai generated question and the prompt says Write a USMLE step two style multiple choice question on septic shock management. Use a clinical vignette with relevant history, vitals, and labs. Provide four answer choices, A through D, only one correct. Give the correct answer and a detailed explanation of why it is correct, plus explanations for why the other options are wrong. Keep the difficulty moderate. And what we want to do is, I'm actually going to copy and paste this and we're going to put it right into chat GPT and see what it does. All right. I'm just copy and pasting it into chat GPT. We'll send that. Oh, actually I didn't even put it in there. Wait, we're going to recopy and paste that. And at the end, we're going to put what questions or clarifications do you have? We'll see what it kicks back. Uh, got it. I can draft this for you. Before I do, a couple quick clarifications to make sure I pitch the vignette at the right level and cover what you want. Question one, focus of the question. Do you want it centered on the initial resuscitation steps or would you prefer something about next management after a partial response? Let's say initial resuscitation steps. Two, it says lab and exam details. Would you like me to include things like lactate, creatinine, white blood cell count or keep it simpler with just vitals and mental status? Include labs. Clinical settings, you prefer a classic pneumonia to septic shock case, very step two style, or something slightly trickier. Um, let's say step two style. Once I know these, I'll be able to make it. So we're gonna send that. Perfect, thanks for clarifying. Here is a step two style multiple choice question. Question, 62 year old man is brought to the emergency department with fever, productive cough, and confusion. He has a history of type two diabetes mellitus and hypertension. On arrival, his temperature is 39.2, blood pressure 76 over 44, and heart rate is 126. His respiratory rate is 22 and he's satting 89% on room air. He appears ill and diaphoretic. Lung exam re reveals diffuse crackles in the right lower lobe. Laboratory results include a leukocytosis to 21,000, lactate of 5, creatinine to 2.1, bicarbonate of 17. Blood cultures 
are obtained. What is the what of the following is the most appropriate next step in management? A. Administer broad spectrum intravenous antibiotics immediately. B. Administer 30 cc per kg bolus of intravenous crystalloid. C. Begin norepinephrine infusion. Or D. Administer stress dose hydrocortisone. And the answer they give is B. Administer a 30 cc per kilogram bolus of intravenous crystalloids. And it provides this long explanation. The patient meets criteria for septic shock infection, most likely pneumonia, which included hypotension with an SBP less than 90. Elevated lactate and an organ dysfunction. Their surviving sepsis campaign emphasizes a bundle of care for initial resuscitation. Obtain cultures, which are done here, administer broad spectrum antibiotics within one hour, and give an initial 30 cc per kg. IV crystalloid bolus. If hypertension persists after fluid, start vasopressors, norepinephrine is first line. The immediate priority in this patient who is profoundly hypotensive and hypoperfusive is restoring intravascular volume with fluids. Antibiotics are crucial, but fluids come first to stabilize perfusion. Why the other options are wrong? A, administer broad spectrum antibiotics immediately. Antibiotics should be started quickly, ideally within one hour of recognizing septic shock, blah, blah, blah. C, begin norepinephrine infusion. Vasopressors are indicated only if hypertension persists, blah, blah, blah. And D, administer stress dose hydrocortisone. Steroids are reserved for patients with refractory septic shock, blah, blah, blah. So as you can see, it's a pretty good question, right? Like, you know, it's not super hard. It's reasonable. It gives you the guidelines. It provides explanations. Um, and in, in our mind, it's fairly high level, Um in terms of its question generation. And you can mold that, right? You can make it board style. Um, you have some way step one, step two, step three, NCLEX, you know, all the other tests, just put that in there. And it does a fairly good job. So tips for workflow. Um, you can have it generate five like batches of questions with answers and explanations. And that's what we tend to do, right? So if we go back there, you could say, you know, create five questions using similar prompt this time include septic shock, ARDS, and um, cardiogenic shock. Any questions or clarifications? Uh, that's not how you spell clarifications. Right, yes, thank you. And then at once it has some clarifications. You want all five evenly split. I'll say evenly split across those. Should East be about initial resuscitation? Do you want to mix? Mix. Difficulty, do you want it moderate or do you want me to vary, vary? And do you want to include labs and imaging? Include labs and imaging. And then I send that. And we won't go through all the questions, but I think it'll probably make some decent questions, right? So, provides questions, labs, vitals, on pneumonia, explains the answers. Question two uh, seems to be on starting norepinephrine. Question three is on ARDS. Question four is on ARDS again, and question five is on cardiogenic shock, right? So it'll just come up with these uh, with explanations and all that kind of stuff. So you can have it do batches of questions too. Uh, make sure you put the difficulty in there, beginner, intermediate, or advanced in the prompt itself. That can be really helpful. And then you can have it randomize the way that you learn. So mix recall or application questions if you want to kind of take it even to the next level. You can have it refine explanations, right? So reword explanation be simpler or make rationale evidence based with trial names or even be more thorough in your explanations. So don't be shy in asking it to explain things in the detail you want it to. And then format consistently. Always request a certain exam style, USMLE style, board style, what have you, because um, that'll make the questions significantly different than if you don't. Pitfalls and warnings, as we said, uh, ChatGPT can generate errors. You don't know, you got to be careful. Um, explanations will always sound convincing, even if they are wrong. Uh, but it doesn't seem to happen often, but they will, you know, they'll never say, we're not sure on the answer. Um, don't obviously plagiarize any exams or things. And then um, great practice for teaching, but uh, and learning, but obviously uh, structure study resources at this point are just the only way to make sure it's totally dependable in terms of its um, uh, accuracy. So in general, um, these AI-generated multiple choice questions I think are high quality, but human reviews required unless you're okay with every once in a while a question being inaccurate. Uh, best used as an adjunct tool, um, not as replacement for kind of these curated resources, although they are very expensive, so it'd be nice if it was a replacement. It probably will be at some point. And then uh, AI-generated questions to improve engagement and retention um, is reasonable, uh, especially you can have it kind of focus on things that you've been struggling with. Um, I think that can be sometimes helpful.
That's all we have for you today. That is how to generate a high quality chat GPT practice question or test. Prompt is everything. Refine it as you need to. Let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. And let us know if this was helpful. Again, we haven't done a video or a episode like this before. Um, so we want to know your guys' thoughts. Again, this will be on our Patreon page with the prompt and all that good stuff. So check that out if you're interested. Uh, and then either way, stay well, keep learning. We'll see you next time.